In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, go through the whole entire wiring system of your riding lawnmower. I'm going to do it as detailed as possible. As I'm going to let you know as much as I know. I may miss something. If I do, just leave it in the comments or something. So what you're going to need for this job is one of these, a multimeter. Now you can buy these pretty cheap, or you can even use a coupon and get it for free from Harbor There's Freight. There's two settings on this that we're going to be using, if you have one of these. And um, let me switch to the first one. DC volts, you want to set it on 20. The other setting that we're going to use is for continuity. This is going to be our first uh, do-it-yourself tool. And this is just going to be voltage tester to make sure you're getting power to things. And what you're going to need is a little bulb for a 12 volt system. You can use your headlight, just take it out, and it'll work for this. Two wires. Um, I probably need longer ones, but that's alright. With the end stripped off, um, about an inch, I guess. It's less than an inch, but enough to wrap around the metal part of this bulb. Electrical tape and it's real simple to make. You're going to take your bulb and one of the wires just kind of wrap it around that a bit and you're going to take your electrical tape. Gosh that's a little difficult for me. And just get enough to stick or keep that wire onto the bulb so you can like wrap the tape once around the bulb or twice around the bulb just keeping that wire on there I'll try and get this best I can so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the tape over this part of the wire first kinda surround it then put that over the bulb and you don't want to touch in the glass part, just that metal part. Make sure it's got contact. And then you're just going to wrap that around. And then you're going to cut this excess at the bottom off so you can reach the bottom. So now we got the bottom exposed, and we're basically just going to do about the same thing. You want your other wire touching that little nub right there, but you don't want it touching the other part that the red wire was touching. And you're just going to tape that one on too. So now for your uh, continuity tester, you're just going to need a 9 volt battery, your first uh, voltage tester and another wire more electrical tape so basically all we're going to do is I'm going to take this coming from the test light put it on one of these terminals in this case I'm putting mine on the positive terminal although I believe it doesn't make a difference I'm just going to tape that on Make sure that stays. And then just put your other wire, your new wire, on the other terminal. In this case, a negative. On the one skin, I don't think it matters. And just tape that on. And put this like that. There you go. Alright, so we got both this tape. So on. first we're gonna start off with the uh basic troubleshooting, like maybe operator error. And as you see right now, my mower nothing happens. Now there's three things that can be wrong. One thing so you can have your mower blades engaged. There's a safety switch on that. So you're going to disengage your blades. Same thing for PTO. I know there's electric PTO mower 
blades instead of this and uh, you just push that in. Make sure you're sitting in the seat. Sitting in the seat. I apologize if that sounded like something else. Uh, can't see it because of bad lighting. But there's a switch right there. You can see it. That's a safety switch to make sure that you're in on the mower so that can start. And you want your brake all the way in. And that activates the safety switch too. And I'm going to take this spark plug wires off because I don't want my mower to start. But I'll show you now. By the way, this one is an Arians, uh, Husqvarna, Craftsman, maybe some other mowers. They have the battery here and a solenoid up here. We'll get into that in a minute or two. But now, so we have our blade turned off, seat switch activated, brake all the way on. You can see, now it works. So that's some basic troubleshooting in case it was just working a minute ago or just you forgot to turn one of those off or forgot to press one of them. Now first, this is probably one of the most obvious things, you want to check your battery. So I'm going to do this with the multimeter, although you can do this with your homemade voltage tester too. This is without the battery, testing voltage, not continuity. That's all you're going to do. Set your multimeter to DC 20 volts. Set negative on negative. This is hard to do with one hand. Let me see if I can do this. There you go. And you should get 12 volts. Now something else you can do to test the battery how it does under a load is you get one person while you're holding those these probes, I think they're called, onto the battery terminals, you're going to get one person to crank, hit the key, if it works, if if it's not a key switch issue, and you're going to get them to do that, and um, if that number goes below 6 volts, you got to replace your battery, but if it does not, or if it still doesn't just crank over at all, and it's probably a different wiring issue, but that's definitely something to check. You need 12 volts or more coming from that battery. So now the next sort of basic, less in detail thing that you're going to want to find is your starter solenoid. And that will look like that. It'll have two big posts, I guess you could say, or terminals. And then some are three prong, some are... My bad. Some are four prong. Let me get this flashlight in here. If you can see it. There you go. Down there you see this one's a four prong. You see the two um, wires going into the bottom terminals also. And now there's two ways to find this thing. I guess on an Arians and some mowers with a rear battery. It'll be right there. But if it's not... It's going to be John Deere, usually it sits right there, the battery is usually sitting like right here in this kind of tray thing and there's a solenoid on that, or Craftsman Husqvarna, it's on this side right here, those can be hard to get to, and sometimes it'll be sitting like right here, and I'll show you two ways if you still can't find it. Two ways to find it. You want to follow either this wire coming from your battery, the red positive. You just follow that and it'll lead straight to the solenoid. And like on this one, you can see the camera would focus. It is that left post. You can see the red. Now this right post goes to the starter. You can see it's black wire with red stripe. This one, just a full red. And that's the other way that you can find it. Is you go to your starter, which is right here. 
and you see the red and black wire and you just follow it this one runs underneath the frame back here to the solenoid so that's how you're gonna find your solenoid and I'll show you what you want to check on that so to te test this solenoid you're gonna set your multimeter on DC 20 volts and uh, once again you can see that mine's not the most accurate as long as it's, it's around 12 volts and uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your red one onto the post of the solenoid that connects directly to the battery so the one with the red wire going straight to the battery and then you're gonna take your black one and you're going to touch it to the battery and you should be getting 12 volts in this case I am so if you're not getting 12 volts you probably want to check this wire make sure this is fully secured check the wire going all the way down to there make sure both connections are tight and make sure there's no splits in it or anything. Now here's a uh, less safe way that you can test that your um, solenoid is good I guess there's getting connection between the red and the starter side the battery and the starter side you can take your screwdriver and touch it to both of those posts and it'll probably spark a lot I've done it before and it did spark a lot but it should start turning the motor over at least turning the starter now if it if you hear a click sound um, that means that your solenoid is most likely good so with that you're gonna check your uh, safety switches which are connected to those two down there like I showed you earlier or that your key switch is not working properly or that your starter is not working so now what we're gonna do next is check the key switch and then I'll show you how to check the um, safety switches. So next what we're gonna check is the key switch and uh, this is the old key switch off the Husqvarna with um, an electric PTO mower blade and gauge. So this one's a little different than the others but they're still all pretty similar. This one it's hard to see because it's there are letters kind of put in to this plastic each labeling these prongs and um, they all have a meaning like there's one that says that has a letter G I believe it's this one on this switch that stands for ground there's one with S for solenoid M for magneto L for lights and so on and uh, with the ones with electric PTOs such as this one you have an A and sometimes you have an A2 which is A stands for accessory this one only has one A so in this purpose it's accessory one meaning the PTO so now I'll go ahead and tell you or show you which of these to connect and in what position on the key so right now I'm going to check five out of seven poles on this and most lower and mowers will have a five pole um, the only reason this one's a seven pole is because of the PTO and on the five pole you're gonna have the letters M for magneto S for solenoid L for lights G for ground and B for battery so you wanna locate each of those letters and uh, figure out which prong they are referring to and most times it'll be right next to it and these things are generally um, I just forgot the word I forgot whatever um, so most of the time they're the same so what we're gonna need for this part is our continuity tester I'm gonna use this one instead of my multimeter just for the people that may not have a multimeter I'll show them how to do it with this and first we're going to start and make sure that the switch 
kills the mower like it's supposed to, or turns it off like it's supposed to. So the two terminals or prongs on here that we're going to connect first are G for ground and M for magneto. And I'm just using a screwdriver because that works with these things. So I'm going to connect one of these to the G for ground, which is this one right here and a seven prong. Let me. And these are nice having holes in them because it makes testing them easier. And now I'll connect it to the M, which is right here. Magneto is what gives your engine its spark. And it should. What the heck? There we go. Okay, so you can see that this one properly kills it. If you can see the light lighting up. Okay, now you can't. There we go. The light's lighting up. I think I had bad connection on this little battery here. So this one's got rough connection to it just because it's so it's been sitting outside and it's corroded. But that shows right there that it properly will kill your mower. So now we're going to set it into the headlight position. So turn it one click, and uh, this is just so it'll, you can make sure that it will run on, run while your lights are on, and this will be the same for the um, just run position too. Like it, unless the fuse does not have lights, that you don't have to test the other for just the run position. You just have to test this. So we're going to connect the B and the L term continuity between them and we do or we did there we go these connections are loose as you can see we have continuity between B and L so battery and lights so that works properly and now we're going to check the start position and make sure that the key uh, switch still works for starting. So to check the starting you're going to connect the terminals B and S and those two are on this key switch they're right next to each other so we'll connect those two and now my connections on this one since this thing's been sitting outside for a while are quite corroded but the light is still dim and you're gonna you might need help doing this I just connected my wires on it and I'm holding the battery terminals because that's what's wrong on this thing with my continuity tester and you're gonna turn the key in the start position this one's so junky it's hard to do and you should get continuity there we go one of these is bad right here So I'm going to show you how to uh, test these safety switches, and because they're hard to get to on my mower, and I prefer not to, you know, get into all that at the moment, I'm going to show you the best I can with two fuses, because this setup right here that I've got put together is pretty similar to uh, how it looks, and this, this is for the brake switch and the... Most of the time the mower switch, although it may be different for yours. What you're going to do is you're going to have a left side and a right side. Doesn't If you get it mixed up, that's okay. And basically, you want to check continuity between these and these. Now, you have the button on the other side of it. And basically, when you press that button down, it's going to let current flow through these two. Or it will let current flow through these two, depending on which way you have it um, turned. Now, you want to check both sides with for continuity with your uh, continuity tester or multimeter. And... 
without the breast button being pressed down. Now one side should have continuity, one side should not. If both sides have continuity, then it needs replaced. Now, so you've done one side has continuity, the other doesn't. When you push the button down, the other side should have continuity now too. If it does not, then you need to replace your switch. And that's all it is for those. Pretty simple for testing the brake switch. And like I said, it should be similar for the, um, oh gosh, what did I just say? Mower switch. And the seat switch, you want to, uh, there's two different types of them. There's a closed circuit one and an open circuit one. And basically, for a closed circuit one, that means the circuit is closed and the electricity can flow through. So you want continu continuity going through it when the button is pressed down. And you don't want continuity, continuity flowing through it when the breast button is released. So that means it's not working properly. So that's for a closed one. And then an open circuit switch, you want continuity through it when the button is released and then no continuity when the button is pressed down and that's how you check your safety switches and next I'll show you how you can test your real starter. quick I'll show you something if your starter is weak here's something that can go bad in them are the brushes uh, all, all these mowers starter motors use brushes and brushes are basically these things that right there goes to the shaft touches the shaft you know that um turns the gear and the motor and all that and your mower starter mower brushes won't look exactly like this these are for my angle grinder but it's basically the same concept usually one will be connected to the terminal that you screw the uh, cable in that goes to the solenoid and the other one will just be sitting over here sometimes they're in a pattern like that with the shaft like that but basically if these get worn out you're not getting contact to the shaft so it's not gonna it's gonna be weak or it's gonna you know not spin at all so that's one thing you need to check especially if an older machine or if you have to hold the key over for a long time to start it it can wear those things out and they'll get and then you won't have any connection and you can't get your motor working and I'll show you another way that you can make sure your starter is good. So now another thing that you want to check is make sure that your starter is getting a full 12 volts. So you see, I've used this little alligator clip because I don't have another free hand to hold that on there. You're going to want to hook your positive onto there and set your negative on the ground anywhere. I can just set mine in there. And then you're going to want to turn the key with all the sitting in the seat and everything. This would probably be even better if you had two people. Break down, seat, someone sitting in the seat, that back. And you're just going to turn the key. And uh, you see mine doesn't do anything because I'm not sitting down. But you should get the full 12 volts of the starter. Now, if you don't, there could be two things that's wrong. You need to check, make sure your ground is actually a proper ground. Um, you may need to check the wire and make sure that it is not split anywhere or not broken anywhere. And you also want to check your fuse. Um, the fuse connects to the uh, starter, and it looks like one of these that I just showed you earlier. Right here. That's your fuse. It's like a blade fuse. And it will be in something that looks some similar to this. It'll just be in in something like that, and you'll have the wire, you know, going in, out. So you want to check that. And if the camera will zoom in enough, you can see that arc in the middle there. Here we go. Then here's what we'll do. The arc in the very middle hard to see you want to make sure that that is intact if this plastic is melted around here that 
means that your fuse has burned out because you put too much load under the starter. And yes, I did do that once on the mud mower when I uh, was trying to start it with that thing that was stuck on there. And you're also just going to want to test continuity between this and this. That's, uh, if you can't see it well, just test continuity between it. And you should have continuity if you don't replace it. They're cheap. Uh, so you want to check that. Make sure your fuse is good. And then you also want to make sure that all your connections are clean. And you want to do this for the whole mower. For your key switch, all those prongs. Like you saw on that one I just tested, it was hard to get it to light up because the prongs are all corroded and rusty. Sand them with sandpaper. You can do that. All these, disconnect that. You can't even see that. Um, disconnect that, you know. Disconnect all the wires, all the ground ports, all the red positive terminals and everything. Make sure they're not rusty. If they are, sand them. Even if they aren't, wire brush them, sand them. Your battery terminals, if your battery's older, it may be given 12 volts, but th these right here, the contacts can get corroded, and I'll make a weak connection. You want to check that. And basically, it's just a bunch of going through, checking nothing, none of the wires are split up. You check the switches, you check the solenoid, which I showed you how to do both. Check the starter. If all that, after your starter, still does not work, you probably want to replace your starter. There's a bigger issue that's not worth taking the time to fix. You just want to replace it. These, you can get these cheap at Walmart, wherever. Just make sure you get the four prong, the three prong correct. And one other thing is if your engine, you know, it will turn over and everything, all this works there is another thing that can go wrong in the front called the fuel solenoid. Now you may have seen a couple videos if you uh, are subscribed to my channel. You saw a couple videos on me deleting the fuel solenoid in my mower and then that breaking so then I just put a bolt in there and your fuel solenoid, let me get a flashlight here and I'll show you. If these things go bad and it will just cause your engine not to get gas because what it does is it blocks the gas off from going up through the jet it's hard to see in there, right there that's your fuel solenoid and now there's a couple ways you can check it let me set this here so you can see one way is you want to take your key and you want it to be as silent as possible and if you have if you have somebody else with you you can get them to stand up here with the ear next to it but when you turn the key into the run position you should hear a light click so we'll try that I don't know if you can hear that on camera but I can hear so that means that it's working you want to make sure these are good make sure it's plugged in and these go bad. They're there so that the motor doesn't backfire when you shut it off, which it still did for me sometimes. So I kind of see them as just bigger problems. What you can do is there's different types. I have a video of deleting one uh, on a Nikki carburetor. I believe this one's a Walbro, although it may also be a Nikki. Uh, they are a bit different. You can unscrew that, and there'll be a shaft just sticking out with a rubber rubber tip on the end. And you just use a hacksaw and cut that shaft off and screw it back in, and you should be good to go. So that'll delete it, and um, if your battery's dead, as you saw in another mud mower video, if you're subscribed, it won't start. It won't get fuel if there's not 12 volts going to that. One other thing with the electric PTO's mowers is you'll have a relay like this 
and those, you let it sit outside for, I don't know, let's say it's been sitting outside for a year or so, these will just get completely trash on the inside. Let me open this one up for you. This is an old one off the Husqvarna. And if these go bad, usually if you have your brake and everything on, all the safety switches working, your mower will start. But when you let off the brake, it'll die. And this is why. As you can see, this the mower sat outside for three years that this came off of. And it does not look good one bit. You want to replace this. These are pretty cheap, too. Um, I think I found a replacement for like nine bucks. I'm sure you could get it even cheaper. Usually that's only an issue on PTOs. I have not seen one of these on a non-PTO mower. But uh, that should be your issue if it cuts off when you let off the brake. And also, on a PTO mower, you've got... Of course, your wires going down to your electric PTO, and if your PTO does not activate, you either have a problem with the PTO, which you might just want to sell the mower at that point because they're like two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, between there. But that will be a whole nother issue with your key switch or just checking your wiring. This one, that's for the hour meter right there. This mower doesn't have one. But that's basically all it is. And I believe that that is everything. If I miss anything, like I said, just go put it in the comments. I apologize if I did. I don't think I did, though. And, um, hope this video helps. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment. I do have an Instagram for the channel, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, if you want to keep up with me in there too. It's called gas.and.oil. The profile picture at the moment is a picture of the dirt bike right there in front of the tree right there. So, yeah. Like, subscribe, comment, go follow that Instagram. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments, and I will do my best to reply. That's everything.